Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of AIC TV. I'm Edward Carr, your host, in conjunction with Dukascopy TV. And today we have a special treat for you, ladies and gentlemen. We actually have a panel. And this panel is made up of two world-renowned experts. On my right-hand side, I have Jochen Steiger. Jochen is the CEO of Swiss Resource Capital and the chief editor of Commodity TV. He's one of the leading experts in the natural resource field. On my left, I have Ross McElroy. Ross is actually the president, chief operating officer, and chief geologist of Fission Uranium, one of the most exciting uranium companies listed in Canada, if not the world. So, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. And well, thank you very much. It's great to have you guys here. <laughs> so today we're going to have a little discussion about uranium and about Fission Uranium specifically. So, Jochen, you are an absolute specialist in this field. You've seen lots of companies, especially lots of uranium and natural resource companies. What separates Fission from all those other companies? Oh, really a lot. Honestly, they are, they've checked the boxes. Yeah, uh, It's not only that they are in a very safe jurisdiction, but they've brought out a fantastic resource, 105 million pounds. That's one thing. And the other thing is they are fully financed. Mm -hmm. They can do their drill programs. Yeah, And also what separates uh, this company is really the team. And honestly, Ross McElroy, he is one of the top guys really in the world for uranium. And I'm totally happy that uh, I'm allowed to work with the guys and with him. And uh, honestly, that I'm also a shareholder of the company. Fantastic. <laughs> and Ross, welcome to the program. You know, you, you are such an expert in the, uh, in the uranium sector. For all our viewers out there that are not really experts in this field, you were actually awarded one of the most prestigious awards, the Prospector of the Year, correct, at the PDAC show in Canada? Yes, I was for 2014. For 2014, fantastic. And was that due directly to discoveries at uh, Fission Uranium? It really was because of our um, tremendous discovery, the PLS uh, uranium project up in, in the Athabasca Basin in, in Saskatchewan. It was recognized as not only um, the best uranium project out there, but because it, it's measured against other commodities and other projects worldwide, and, uh, and it was recognized as the most successful, most exciting, and also because we found uranium in a, in a district that, or in an area that people hadn't really been looking for, sort of changed the model, and, and that was really what, what led it to, uh, to allow to win the awards. Fantastic. In your project, when it comes to uranium, I'm a very layman, so I don't have so much expertise, but I know uranium, gold, silver, you always look at the grades of the project. And some of the grades you see out of African uranium projects might be 1% uranium if it's a fantastic project. How are your grades up, up in uh, northern Canada? Northern Canada is unique, and it's the Athabasca Basin in, in particular that's special. It has the world's highest grade uranium deposits by far. And the first lesson you'll learn in economic geology is grade is king. It is the number one priority for economics. Uh, there's other things that are important too, but grade is always at the top of the list. Wow, and what type of grades are you getting out of your recent drill results? Well, we're seeing some tremendous uh, results. The Athabasca Basin is famous for having multi-percent deposits and intersections. Uh, at PLS, we're hitting some of the best that have ever been drilled. Uh, in fact, one of our holes was, was ranked the number one exploration hole ever drilled in the Athabasca Basin, uh, second behind a very high grade producing mines. So we're seeing um, in numbers up to 30%, 40%. 30, 30 to 40 percent in the best, best hole ever drilled. To me, Jogan, that sounds amazing. I mean, in, in yeah, your absolutely. background, what do you yeah. think? Absolutely outstanding. And honestly, this is something what I should add also. Uh, this distinguishes fission from, uh, I would say, the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about the average in the world is like 0.2 percent mm -hmm. for a deposit. Wow. And the 105 million pounds are at 1.58 percent. Ross, if I'm right, I think that's correct. Correct. Yeah. And uh, so here, this is an outstanding grade, and uh, I'm pretty sure that this will be really economic, as it is also very shallow. Mm -hmm. You know, the mineralization starts like uh, 50 meters below surface. 50 meters. Yeah. So this could be a future open pit. Absolutely, and that's what really distinguishes this deposit from even anything else in the Athabasca Basin, is that it's not only is it large and it's high grade, but it's shallow, so near surface. That really opens up all the opportunities for near surface mining such as open pitting it that's the kind of thing that that makes a big difference this sounds amazing i mean did i hear johan correctly you have over a hundred million pounds of uranium already yeah we do it that was only after two years of drilling 
220 holes. So in a very short uh, time span, we've been able to outline what is now the, the uh, third largest uranium deposit in the Athabasca Basin region. That is unbelievable. Well, congratulations on all that success. What's the future? Are you continuing to drill now? Uh, we are continuing. We're very early uh, on in the program. It's, as I mentioned, it, it's been two and a half years since discovery. Uh, it's just still opening up wide for us right now. We, had, uh, we just came off of a winter program where we made another discovery on trend of high-grade mineralization on another zone. So it really shows that not only do we have a very large deposit right now that we've outlined, but it has the potential to, uh, to really have significant growth. And expansion. So we'll be back in there drilling this summer. We've already got a, a major program designed for, we'll be uh, starting to drill in July. Mm -hmm. And any preliminary economic assessments or feasibilities coming up? That's what uh, that's what's so important here. It, after only two years of discovery and such a small timeline, we've been able to move this already to the stage that we would start looking at the economic viability of this project. So the first thing that you would do is, as you mentioned, a preliminary economic assessment that will start to address the cost of production. What would it take to actually put this thing into production, uh, putting some of the infrastructure in, the mining techniques. And because this is such a large, high-grade, shallow deposit, we're quite optimistic that the PEA will, will show some very encouraging numbers. Amazing. Now, Johan, you're German. Yes. And uh, <laughs> the, the German uh, government made the decision to pretty much shut down the nuclear reactors. Yeah. So yeah. who needs all these hundreds of millions of pounds of uranium that's yeah. going to come out? Yeah. Where's the uranium going these days? Yeah. Honestly, I think first of all, I should commend on the stupid uh, German decision, honestly. I am a German, but honestly, I think this is very stupid um, because they shut down all the six nu uh, nuclear power plants. Yeah, and uh, I'm a total contrarian to that, as you should be today, because uranium is still, to me, I would call it still the green future. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people would hate me to say that, but it is for me the green future, um, because the waste what you have when you when you, when you uh, work a nuclear power plant and in, in conjunction what you can generate for power, for example, what you get out of coal or oil or gas, etc. Yeah? And uh, if you put this in conjunction with the emissions, CO2 emissions, yeah, it, it's unbelievable the difference Fantastic. and so I'm I'm totally positive on uranium and honestly the world is not falling apart because Germany shut down because Germany is the only country in the world which shut down and everybody else is building up and mm -hmm. uh, currently on the world there are 65 nuclear power plants are in the progress in the making in the building and honestly in China we have uh, this year I think every second month we have one nuclear power plant going online mm -hmm. and they have to Mm -hmm. because the, the, the pollution of the environment is it, it's horrible. It's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, also from the demand and supply side, this is very interesting. This is something what we really like also, what uh, we are always talking a lot about also in, at, at Commodity TV. Um, probably 140, 145 million pounds are mined this year. Yeah? This, those are not my numbers. Those are numbers from, from large research uh, houses uh, in the world. Uh, I've, I've read about it, yeah and uh, probably 180 million is consumed. Yeah, there was a gap filled through the Russians, you know, the megaton to megawatt program, but this is done, all the nuclear weapons are, yeah, destroyed and used in nuclear power plants. So from where does it come from? This is the big uh, future question, and hopefully it will come in the future also from fission, that there will, there will be a mine someday. Yeah, of course, mm -hmm. this will take several years because this is a very large project, but uh, uh, I believe there will be a mine in the future. Um, so what, what is, what is so positive also for fission there is we have a supply deficit. And the sooner, the later, when you have supply deficits in an underlying like uranium, the price will rise. Mm -hmm. I give you a nice example. Um, I was talking to one of the leading um, analysts uh, in Toronto during PDAC in March. And uh, he said to me, you know, the large U.S. utilities, they have only closed for 2016 and 2017 25% of their contracts. They have to buy mm -hmm. and they have to do something right now because otherwise they have to buy on the spot market or they have to use yeah spontaneous sources, I would call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if you uh, run large companies like this and large power plants like this, we talk about multi-billion dollar businesses, 
you don't want to uh, be dependent on spot markets. Mm -hmm. You want to secure your supply. Of course. Well, thank you very much for that. Ross, it sounds like you are certainly in the right place at the right time, oh, yeah. and uh, this sector is going to turn. Now, you're a publicly traded company. Where do our viewers find more information on Fission Uranium? We can go to the Fission Uranium website, which is fissionuranium.com, mm -hmm. and uh, we are traded on the TSX Senior Board. Okay. What's your stock ticker? FCU. 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 Fantastic. So everyone should keep an eye on that. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming into the studio. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you about fission uranium and the uranium market in general. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Edward Carr. This has been AIC TV in conjunction with Dukascopy TV. Stay tuned for more future interviews.